now that we have tokens in our app, so it generates a token when a user registers and it also generates a token when they log in, we can use that to kind of check for in some of the views. So if we go to our application, and right now I don't think I have any blog posts, so let's just create a, create a random blog post, just gonna add some random stuff here. Uh, let's just add a thumbnail, click post. Oh, and I did post it, whoops, I just didn't see it. So there we have a blog post now. Um, so how, how can I view that? So if I click this, I can get the slug. We can go to Postman. I'm gonna create a new get request. Uh, I need actually to copy this URL, go to API slash blog, and then I believe it's the slug. So if I go copy the slug, paste that in, that should be fine. There's, there's the blog post that I just posted. So what we wanna do is we wanna restrict that so that only users who have authenticated or users that have a token, in other words, will be able to, to uh, see that. So we want a header with a token here. So that's what we're gonna work on in this video. We're gonna work on restricting access to, um, to, these, to the content on the website using the authentication method. So the first thing we wanna do is I wanna go into settings.py and we need to add a default, uh, default permission class. So I'm gonna copy this since it's gonna be very similar and I'm gonna change this to default permission classes. And the class that we want here is frestframework.permissions.isauthenticated. And what that's gonna do is um, it'll check to see what authentication kind of uh, class that we're using, which is token authentication, and it will check to see. It will therefore check to see if there's a token attached to the requests that get made. So now let's go and add some restrictions. So I'm going to go into views.py. Oh, it's not this one. We want to go into our our blogging app. So into blog, into API, and then into views, and we're going to add some restrictions. So first, I need to add an import. I want to add uh, permission classes. Permission. Uh, permission underscore classes to the decorators import. And I also want to import another thing. So from rest framework dot permissions import is authenticated. And we're going to use that in our views. So the first one is the API blog detail view. So that's, that's this view right here. So what do we want to happen here? Well, we don't want users who aren't authenticated to be able to use this view, to be able to look at it. So I want to add a permission classes annotation. And inside here, I'm gonna pass is authenticated and uh, that's it. So now it, it's very simple. Now, no user without a token will be able to visit that view. I'll show you what I mean. Watch what happens when I try and look at it. It says that I could not get a response. That's actually because there's an error. It looks like there's a default permission classes invalid syntax. Let's take a look at the settings.py. Settings.py, sorry. There's no comma. There's no comma here. There needs to be a comma. So I press Control S. Now let's go back to Postman. Let's make sure that the server is running first of all. So running that server looks good. Now let's go to Postman and try and send that request again. Now it gives me a response that says authentication credentials were not provided. That's perfect because I didn't I didn't attach any kind of a token to the request. So now what can I do? Well, I'm gonna go to the server, I'm gonna go to the admin, and I'm gonna copy the token for one of the authenticated users. In this case, I'll just use Mitch at Tabian.ca. Now that I've, I've copied the token, I have a get request. I'm going to headers. I'm gonna type authorization. And then the value is gonna to be token, space, and then the token. Now watch what happens. Now I can actually get that request. So once a user has a token, they can view the content on the website. So that is one way that we're gonna be leveraging the, uh, the tokens. Now let's take a look at these other views. These are a little different. So the update view, for example, not only do we want users to be able to be authenticated, but we, we need them to be the actual user that made that blog post in the first place. So number one is we're gonna check for the blog post. And then after that, I wanna check to make sure that the author of the blog post is the same author that's currently authenticated or the one that's passing the token through the request. So I'm coming up here and I'm gonna write, um, Get the, I'm gonna get the user object. So now that we have an authentication method and we have token authentication in place, if they're authenticated, this code will run and then I can get access to the user object through the token. So that's what it, it will do. It will automatically look at the token that's being passed through the request and it will search our database for the user that's authenticated, that's uh, associated with that token. Pretty cool stuff, Django is, is very handy. So now if blog post dot author does not equal that user, then I want to return response 
and I want to basically just tell it, tell the user, tell the person trying to make the request that you don't have permission to edit that because they, they, whoops, I need a double quotations here. You don't have permission to edit that because that, that means that uh, the person who's trying to edit it isn't the one who wrote that blog post. And we're going to do something similar to the delete view. So same kind of thing. I'm copying the permission class, pasting it down here, and I'm going to copy this code snippet right here and paste it below uh, right here where we check for the blog post. So once again, if they're not authenticated, they won't be able to view this, to use this request anyway. If they are authenticated, and they want it to want to delete this um, this blog post. They have to be the user that that actually created that. So you don't have permission to delete that. Is the message that they want to see. Now the next one is the create blog view. This one is going to be a little bit different. Or actually, now we can change this because right now we we've hard coded in an account to um, to pass to get the uh, to set an author to the blog post. Well, now we can actually just go account equals request dot user and we can pass that permission class right here. So it'll check if they're authenticated through the token. If they're authenticated, it will get that account object and it will set the author to the blog post that's being created. So I'm pressing control S to save all that. And now let's test all of these all of these requests. So here's one of the blog posts. Let's uh, let's try to update it. So if I if I go update, this is going to be a put request. Uh, let's try it with a token who isn't the author. So I'm going to try it with this token right here. So this guy is not the author. I should not be able to edit this. So I'm a put request. I have slash update. The header's there. Let's click send. You don't have permission to do that. That's good. So now I will change it to the token of the user that actually did write this. So I'm going in here, pasting in the token, and now let's change some of the fields. So I'll change the title to a uh, new title and then click send. Oh, I need to add all the rest. I, I wasn't sure if I needed to add all of the, all of the fields, but I do. So I need title uh, and I also need image and this is gonna be a file field. So let's choose a new image. Let's just choose the, uh, I think this one is really funny, this views thumbnail, so let's click that. So send. Update was successful, great. Now let's go to the server, let's refresh this. And there's that new thumbnail, new title, new body. So everything's working correctly there. Next is gonna be um, delete. So let's try to delete this. This is gonna be a delete request. And first I'm gonna try it with an incorrect token. So I'm gonna grab a token for a user that's, whoops, a user that uh, did not write this blog post. So go that in there, you don't have permission to delete that. Now let's grab the correct token. Go back to Postman, post that in, delete successful. If I go back to the server, I refresh this, I should see a 404 because that blog post was removed. So now let's uh, let's create a brand new blog post. That's the last thing we want to do. So I'm gonna go create. This is gonna have authorization. We'll have it, we can just have all this stuff still the same. Click send. Uh, looks like I get an error. Oh, I have a, this should be a post request. Let's click send. Looks like I still get an error. Let's just double check this. Oh, it's because the slug is there. This should just be create. There we go. So we have new title, new body. There's everything created. If I go to the server and I just go to the home page, there is that blog post that was generated. So that's all of the requests. Now in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to update your serializers to return extra stuff that wasn't included in uh, in the requ in the request, I guess, or in the serializer, you would call it. So what we're gonna do is if, if we look at the blog serializers, uh, right now the blog post serializer does not return the username of the author. So we're going to be using something called a serializer method field to kind of query the database in the serializer and then return an extra field. So we're gonna be returning the author field. That way when they make a request, or sorry, when they view a blog post, uh, so if I was to, you know, if I was to view any blog post, let's say this one for example, go here, go to blog, paste in the slug. Whoops, this needs to be a get request. Um, it will also return the username of the author. So we're gonna add an extra field.